Today in this lecture we are going to discuss the effect on the venous return curve of changes in mean systemic failing pressure. What will be the effect of changes in mean systemic failing pressure on the venous return curve? Here we have the different venous return curve and here we are changes changing the mean systemic failing pressure and then we are looking at the effect at the effect on the venous return curve. So to discuss the effect of changes in mean systemic failing pressure on venous return curve. Changes in mean systemic failing pressure on venous return curve. We will first of all discuss the normal venous return curve. Normally in a normal human being with normal blood volume, normal heartbeat, normal everything, we have a venous return, we have a normal venous return of around 5 liters per minute at a right atrial pressure of 0 millimeter of mercury. Normally the right atrial pressure, normally the right atrial pressure in a normal human being is 0 millimeter of mercury and the venous return is around 5 liters per minute. This is normal. And this red curve is basically showing the normal venous return. And we have normal mean systemic filling pressure. We see that when the right atrial pressure start increasing, the right atrial pressure starts increasing 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and when it reaches the 7 millimeter of mercury the venous return, the venous return has reached 0 liters per minute from 5 liters per minute to 0 liters per minute at around 7 millimeter of mercury mean systemic filling pressure and right atrial pressure. Normally the pressure here is 0 millimeter of mercury in the right atrium. But when it starts increasing, when it starts increasing, the venous return, the venous return or the return of the blood towards the heart, it starts decreasing. And it and it keeps on decreasing, it keeps on decreasing until the, the pressure in the right atrium has reached 7 millimeter of mercury. It is because the normal mean systemic filling pressure, the normal mean systemic filling pressure in the system is 7 millimeter of mercury or simply speaking the mean systemic filling pressure is the tightness in the in the system it is the tightness with which or the pressure or the filling of the system which is forcing the blood towards the heart and normally this pressure is around 7 millimeter of mercury so as long as the pressure in the heart is less than 7. Suppose for example it is 6 or 5 or 4 or 3. As long as the pressure in the right atrium is less than 7, the blood will keep on moving towards the right atrium. When the pressure in the right atrium has reached 7 millimeter of mercury as here, the venous return will stop at that level or the venous return, return will become 0. And that point is basically known as the mean systemic filling pressure. And the pressure, we have discussed that mean systemic filling pressure is basically the pressure when the heartbeat has been stopped and the circulation of blood in the vessels has been stopped and then the, the pressure on the arterial and venous side equalizes after few seconds after stopping the heartbeat that pressure is known as the mean systemic filling pressure. It is measured only in the systemic side. The pulmonary vessels or the vessels of that are supplying blood to the lungs are not included. So mean systemic filling pressure is the pressure measured in the system when heartbeat has stopped for a few seconds and the pressure, the, the movement of the blood has stopped and pressure on both sides has equalized. Its normal value is around 7 millimeter of mercury and as long as the pressure in the right atrium has not reached the 7 millimeter of mercury, the blood will keep on moving towards the heart. This is normal. This is normal venous return curve. 
Now what will happen if we increase, if we increase or we decrease the mean systemic filling pressure? Normally we see that if the right atrial pressure increases, there is a decrease in the venous return. But when the right atrial pressure starts decreasing, we discussed this thing in our lecture on venous return, that when the right atrial pressure starts decreasing, there is a slight increase in the venous return above the 5. There is slight increase above 5 level, but then there is a plateau. There is a plateau. Even if this pressure reaches minus 50, still there will be no change in the venous return. But when it starts increasing, when it starts increasing, then at the level of 7 mm of mercury, it, the venous return touches 0. Now, if the mean systemic filling pressure, the pressure in the system, the pressure in these filling uh, vessels has been increased, then we see that even at the normal right atrial pressure, even at the normal right atrial pressure, the venous return will be like more than 10 liters. It will be like more than 10 liters per minute, even at zero right atrial pressure, even at normal right atrial pressure, if the mean systemic filling pressure is increased. Normally it is 7. When it has been increased to around 14, we see that even at normal right atrial pressure, the venous return has jumped from this level to this level. It has jumped from this, this normal level to high, higher level. Then we also see that when the mean systemic filling pressure has been increased, then the right atrial pressure will have to reach this level. It will have to reach this level. Only then the venous return or the venous return will touch the zero point. In a normal person, in a normal human being, if the right atrial pressure reaches 7 mm of mercury, the venous return returns to zero in a normal human being. But if the mean systemic filling pressure has been increased, then the right atrial pressure will have to reach a higher level to return the venous, uh, to, to, re to reduce the venous return to zero level because the pressure the pressure with which the the blood is moving toward the heart has been increased now blood is coming with more force towards the heart so the heart the pressure at the right atrium will have to increase even more than 7 it will have to increase even more than 7 only then the venous return will touch the zero level now, so it means that when the mean systemic filling pressure is increased, the venous return at every level, at every level, at every level of the right atrial pressure is higher than normal. At every level of the right atrial pressure, the venous return is higher than this normal value. It is higher than this normal level value because it has reached a higher level at every level of the right atrial pressure. Now, if the mean systemic filling pressure is reduced, suppose for example, the, the tightness in the vessels has been reduced or the filling or the volume of blood in the vessels or the, the tissues has been, the circulation has been reduced. And this mean systemic filling pressure has been decreased from normal seven, from normal seven to 3.5 millimeter of mercury. Now we see that when the mean systemic filling pressure has been reduced, then even at a normal right atrial pressure, even at a normal right atrial pressure, the venous return has decreased. The venous return has decreased. It has decreased below this 5 level. It has decreased below this 5 level. So when the mean systemic filling pressure was increased, the venous returned jump toward a higher side even at the normal right atrial pressure. When the mean systemic filling pressure was decreased, the venous returned decreased to a lower level. It, it decreased to a lower level. The pressure in the right atrium has not changed but only the, the pressure with which the blood is coming toward the heart has been decreased. So 
the venous return ultimately decreases and it also means that when the mean systemic filling pressure has been decreased the right atrial pressure will have to increase only to around 3.5 mm of mercury to return the venous re- to to decrease the venous return to zero level when the mean systemic filling pressure was increased the right atrial pressure the right atrial pressure the pressure at this level has to increase to around 14 to return this to re- to return or to decrease the level of venous return to zero level but when the mean systemic filling pressure has been decreased the right atrial pressure only has to decrease to around 3.5 it has only to de- increase around 3.5 from this zero level from this zero level it has only to increase to around this level to return this venous re- to to decrease this venous return toward the zero level it is a very simple graph it is a very simple graph if you think over it this as a venous this is a venous return and it shows that when the right atrial pressure is zero the venous return normally is 5 liters per minute but if the right atrial pressure starts increasing at a pressure level of around 7 mm of mercury in the heart the venous return becomes zero and that is non- normally considered as mean systemic filling pressure that 7 mm of mercury pressure is considered as normal mean systemic systemic filling pressure but if this pressure this pressure is simply the tightness or the force or the pressure with which the system is pushing the blood towards the heart so if this pressure is increased if this pressure is increased then the right atrial pressure will have this pressure will have to increase so much it will have to increase to this level to decrease the venous return to decrease the venous return to zero level but if this pressure is decreased if this pressure is decreased if the tightness is decreased if the volume is decreased is the filling of the system is decreased then the right atrial pressure will have to increase only around 3.5 to decrease the venous return towards the zero level so we see that there is a very big effect of mean systemic filling pressure there is a big effect of changes in the mean systemic filling pressure on the venous return curve when the mean systemic filling pressure increases the venous return jumps to higher level and when the ve- mean systemic filling pressure is decreased the venous returns decreases the venous return decreases to a lower level and so when the the mean systemic filling pressure increase or decrease the the pressure in the right atrium will also have to increase to a higher level or will have to uh, to increase to a lower level to return the r- venous re- to decrease the venous return towards the zero level because the pressure at this point the pressure at this point will have to be more than it will have to be more than the pressure that is pushing the bloods toward the heart so if the pressure here is more then blood won't be able to come or blood won't be able to return but if the pressure here is less it is lower then the blood will easily be coming towards the heart so that's all about the effect of effect of mean systemic filling pressure on venous return curve